Chapter 19, the story of Elijah the prophet. One of the greatest of all the kings of the ten tribes was Jeroboam II. Under him, the kingdom of Israel grew rich and strong. He conquered nearly all of Syria and made Samaria the greatest city of all those lands. But though Syria went down, another nation was rising to power, Assyria, on the eastern side of the river Tigris. Its capital was Nevea, a great city, so vast that it would take three days for a man to walk around its walls. The Assyrians were beginning to conquer all the lands near them, and Israel was in danger of falling under their power. One of the kings who ruled over Israel was named Ahab. He provoked the anger of the Lord. His wife Jezebel, who was a worshiper of Baal, persuaded him to build an altar to the false god. Elijah, a prophet of the Lord, was sent to him and proposed a test. Two altars were built, one to Jehovah and one to Baal. The priest of Baal called upon their god to send down fire, but there was no answer. Then Elijah called upon the Lord of God of Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, and fire came down and burned up the offering. The people turned upon the priest of Baal and killed them all. Later the wicked queen Jezebel coveted a vineyard for Ahab, and she caused Naboth, the owner of the vineyard, to be placed in front of the battle. When he was slain, Ahab took the vineyard. Once more Elijah came and denounced Ahab and Jezebel, telling them that they had done wickedly and that the Lord would punish them. In a little while the prophet's words came true, for Ahab was slain in the battle and Jezebel was put to death by order of King Jehoel. Elijah was taken up to heaven in a chariot of fire. There was another prophet, a companion of Elijah, whose name was Elisha, a brave and courageous man who did not fail to deliver God's message. It happened that when Elisha was an old man, there came to him King Hoash, who had been made king when he was only seven years old. Yohash was now a young man and was trying to do right in the sight of God. But he felt a need of the prophet's aid. And he came to Elisha, My father, my father, you are more to Israel than its chariots and horsemen. Elisha, though weak in body, was yet strong in soul. He told Yahash to bring him a bow and arrows and to open the window to the east, looking toward the land of Syria. Then Elisha caused the king to draw the bow, and he placed his hands on the king's hands. And as the king shot an arrow, Elisha said, this is the arrow of victory, of victory over Syria. For you shall smite the Syrians in Aphpak and shall destroy them. It happened as Elisha had foretold, and the Syrians were defeated and their cities taken. Now comes the story of Jonah and the whale. At this time another prophet named Jonah was giving the word of the Lord to the Israelites. To Jonah the Lord spoke, saying, Go to Nineveh that great city, and preach to it, for its wickedness rises up before me. But Jonah did not wish to preach to the people of Neiva, for they were enemies of his land and the land of Israel. He wished Neiva would die in its sins and not turn to God and live. So Jonah tried to go away from the city where God had sent him. He went down to Joppa and took a ship for Tarshish. But the Lord saw Jonah on the ship, and the Lord sent a great storm upon the sea, so that the ship seemed as though it would go to pieces. The sailors threw overboard everything on the ship, and when they could do no more, every man prayed to his God to save the ship and themselves. Jonah was now lying fast asleep, and the ship's captain came to him and said, What do you mean by sleeping in such a time as this? Awake, rise up, and call upon your God. Perhaps he will hear you and save our lives. But the storm continued to rage around the ship, and they said, There is some man on this ship who has brought upon us this trouble. Let us cast lots and find out who it is. Then they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. They said to him all at once, Tell us who you are. From what country do you come? What is your business? To what people do you belong? Why have you brought all this trouble upon us? Then Jonah told them the whole story, how he came from the land of Israel 
and that he fled away from the presence of the Lord. And they said to him, What shall we do to you that the storm may cease? Then said Jonah, Take me and throw me into the sea. Then the storm will cease and the waters will be calm. For I know that for my sake this great tempest is upon you. But the men were not willing to throw Jonah into the sea. They rowed hard to bring the ship to the land, but they could not. Then they cried unto the Lord and said, We pray thee, O Lord, we pray thee. Let us not die for this man's life, for thou, O Lord, hast done as it pleased thee. At last, when they could do nothing else to save themselves, they threw Jonah into the sea. At once the storm ceased, and the waves became still. Then the men on the ship feared the Lord greatly. They offered a sacrifice to the Lord and made promises to serve him. And the Lord caused a great fish to swallow up Jonah, and Jonah was alive within the fish for three days and three nights. In the fish Jonah cried to the Lord, and the Lord caused the great fish to throw up Jonah upon dry land. Notice all through this story that although Jonah was God's servant, he was always thinking about himself. God protected Jonah and saved him, not because he was such a good man, but because he wanted to teach him a great lesson. By this time, Jonah had learned that some men who worshipped idols were kind in their hearts and were dear to the Lord. This was the lesson that God meant Jonah to learn, and now the call of the Lord came to Jonah the second time. Arise, go to Nineveh, that great city, and preach to it what I command you. So Jonah went to the city of Nineveh, and as he entered into it, he called out to the people, Within forty days shall Nineveh be destroyed. As he walked through the city all day, crying out only this, Within forty days shall Nineveh be destroyed. And the people of Nineveh believed the word of the Lord has spoken by Jonah. They turned away from their sins and fasted and sought the Lord, from the greatest of them to even the least. The king of Nineveh arose from his throne and laid aside his royal robes and covered himself with sackcloth and sat in ashes as a sign of his sorrow. And the king sent out a command to his people that they should fast and seek the Lord and turn from sin. And God saw that the people of Nineveh were sorry for their wickedness, and he forgave them. And he did not destroy their city, but this made Jonah very angry. He did not wish to have Nineveh spared, because it was the enemy of his own land. And also he feared that men would call him a false prophet when his word did not come to pass. And Jonah said to the Lord, O Lord, I was sure that it would be thus, that thou wouldest spare the city, and for what reason I tried to flee away. For I know that thou wast a gracious God, full of pity, slow to anger, and rich in mercy. Now, O Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. And Jonah went out of the city and built a little hut on the east side of it, and sat under its roof to see whether God would keep the word that he had spoken. Then the Lord caused a plant with thick leaves to grow up and to shade Jonah from the sun. And Jonah was glad and sat underneath its shadow, but a worm destroyed the plant. And the next day a hot wind blew, and Jonah suffered from the heat, and again Jonah wished that he might die. And the Lord said to Jonah, You were sorry to see the plant die, though you did not make it grow. And though it came up in a night and died in a night, and should I not have pity on Nineveh, that great city, where more than a hundred thousand little children and also many cattle, all helpless and knowing nothing? And Jonah learned that men and women and little children are all precious in the sight of the Lord, even though they know not God.